Well, a warm welcome to each and every one of you uh, this Lord's Day. Pray that God will be with you as we go through his word um, this hour, that in every way God has continued to uphold you and enable you and, and to bless you um, as you strive to serve him. Um, and I pray we've been doing just that. It's very easy, my friends, in this time of COVID to um, just become that little bit more deadened, as it were, in our senses to everything around us um, as we see the constant grind that uh, COVID has caused to the lives of many, many people. But uh, God is able. Um, and he's able to keep us through all things. The word of God reminds us in Isaiah and uh, chapter 40 and uh, 28. He asks the question, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the hands of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those, my friends, who put their trust on the Lord, he shall lift them up like eagles' wings. We are to remember just how good God is, even when we are feeling weak and weary well we come once again to god's word before that let us uh pray and then we'll have a look at what the lord will have to say to us this evening and let's pray oh lord god we do thank and praise you once again for your grace and your mercy and your goodness and your love uh, we praise you for the salvation that you had planned from before the world was. We praise you that knowing that, that your creation would uh, fall in sin, that you made a great and eternal plan for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for him to come, for him, O oh God, to come and to live that life that we in our sinful nature could never live, to come and redeem those who, of us who could not redeem ourselves, to come and uh, impart to us his righteousness because our righteousness that we have is of no righteousness at all to come O oh god and allow us to be those that you will look upon in forgiveness look upon with grace look upon with mercy look upon um, with love and help us O oh god to walk in your way we thank you and praise you for god the holy spirit who continues the one who brought Christ to us, you know, the word, he implanted it upon our hearts. We heard and we believed. And uh, now we have come and we pray for all those who hear, who have not yet believed, that they will this day um, know that revelation, know that salvation, know that opening up of heart, the light in the darkness, the dull ears which are cleared out, the blindness taken away from the eyes, and the, oh Lord, the heart of stone being changed, as it were, to a heart of flesh we pray that they will know this wonderful saving grace and uh, come to jesus christ in faith and repentance be O lord with each and every one of our brethren especially those who are not well be with all who are listening who have been struggling um, with so many different issues in life maybe money it might be health it may be loneliness it may be so many things oh lord will you um, encourage their hearts to look to you this hour to hear your words, to be blessed of you, and to know that you are indeed a mighty God who does all things well. And we pray that you will bless, O oh God, us this night, for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we come now to um, look at Galatians once again. My friends, um, Galatians, we're now in chapter 6. If you remember last time, we looked at the second part of Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 to verse 26. Uh, as we looked at uh, 
uh, walking, being led by the Spirit of God, how important the Holy Spirit is in the life of God's people, that the freedom we have in, in Christ is in fact the beginning of our spiritual journey. It's a journey that has many dangers along the way. And we looked at it, we had killing sin, mortifying sin, um, as it were, and fruit growing. You remember uh, the killing of sin, killing of, as it were, the flesh, the flesh not being our, our um, uh, mortal flesh, as it were, but the, the nature, that self-serving nature that we have, that nature that doesn't want to acknowledge God, the nature that doesn't want to submit to God's authority, that nature that makes us so self-centered, that nature that makes us so proud and so self-dependent, that nature that makes us think we're good enough to do it on our own, that nature that shows up in the way we serve ourselves with our eyes can do what I like immorality. That nature, says Paul, these things, these lusts, these desire of the flesh are all against the Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. Child of God, I remind you, as I said last week, we are not perfect. Child of God, we experience sinful desires. Every Christian doesn't, as it were, is portrayed in pictures, doesn't walk around with a halo above their head and, and these angel wings, as it were, behind them. No, no, we struggle as others struggle, but we struggle knowing that God always makes a way of escape for us. We struggle, but knowing that when we are faint and when we are weary, God gives power to us who are weak and to us who have no might, he gives strength. It is God who does it, my friends, because we know how weary those struggles against sin can often be. And remember what it said in verse 17. Do you remember that? The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary to one another. Uh, and it, it reminds us, actually, that if we're going through life and we think we have no spiritual battles, then there really is an issue in our spiritual walk. Because God has said in his word, there will always be, Satan will always desire to sift God's people as wheat. Satan will always be going to and fro like a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour. He need not worry about those who are his, but he is desperate to take away if he can, although it is impossible once one is true in God. But he never stops him trying to um, divert and to make those who are in Christ um, struggle in sin, either by himself or by his agents. And we saw about how we can live in the Spirit. And that was verse 25. This new life we have in Christ by his Spirit. This being born again in his Spirit. This being made alive in his Spirit. Second thing we saw is that we are led by the Spirit. We do not lead God, my friends. God leads us. It's a wonderful thing to know that this God who, who gives us so much and when we deserve nothing at all, from him and all he wants us to do is to be more Christ-like but not by trying to do it on our own not by trying to do it by our own strength because it's not enough Jesus is the only thing that can make us right before God and the last thing well the last thing we saw really was that we we bear fruit if we are living in the spirit if we're being led by the spirit we bear fruit in that same spirit so we finished, I think, with some practical steps, didn't we? Uh, we asked ourselves a question, and I hope it's something that we have done over this past week. We asked the question, are we spending time with God in Bible study and, and prayer? Are we using every avenue? I'm not, just, not just on our own, because we, we broke that down, didn't we, at the Wednesday Bible study, when we saw worship as God intended, a two-part study that we have just completed. So it's not always on our own. While that is good, there is more, and something which is actually more important than our personal study, and that's using corporate time together. And God uh, praises that within the scriptures. Um, and we're to believe what God tells us, uh, if we are to, to understand. We're to believe what the Spirit imparts to us. Because if we, if we listen to it and we don't believe it, 
what's the point? Paul challenges the Galatians. If you remember Galatians 3, when he, he asks them, he says, you know, you've heard the truth. He says, uh, this I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the Lord, by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? And he goes on to deal with them in that respect. So, and the third thing is, my friends, just are we obedient? Or are we, do we have that rebellious nature within us? We need to walk according to the Holy Spirit. So let's read um, God's word here in chapter 6, and then we'll try and see what God will have to say for us or to us um, in this portion of his scripture. Um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, and we read through to verse, the end of verse 10. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while we're doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith. The household of faith. And once again, my friends, we see from God's word here um, that the Holy Spirit remains firmly in, in, in view as we enter chapter 6. And, and, and God here speaks about bearing and sharing each other's burdens. The word here speaks about being generous and doing good. It speaks about loving by the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit genders this nature within us as, it makes, as he makes us more Christ-like. Um, so much um, we can see from um, Paul in his writing, what he is doing here, he's so committed, isn't he, to just helping Christians, to helping you, to helping me uh, to understand um, the Spirit's work, the work of the Holy Spirit. He wants to explain to these Galatians who are really under times of trial from these false preachers and the challenges that Paul has put, that God, the Holy Spirit, is working within them. Christ's Spirit is working within them. The Spirit is the inward witness in our lives. And the many things that we see through the Spirit's work come out in the life of a believer, which he shows. We walk in the Spirit. We are led by the Spirit. Remember, we just went through that. And the way, when we do so, it affects the way in which we relate to one another. <clears throat> Um, and, and, and he did sort of speak to that. He says there in chapter 5, verse 13, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use the liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but, look at the language, through love serve one another. And even Jesus himself <clears throat> in Matthew, in uh, chapter 22 of Matthew, when he was challenged by those Pharisees at verse 34. Um, 20, the Pharisees, it says here, the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees. The Sadducees challenged him first. Jesus dealt with them. Now the Sadducees, now the, um, the Sadducees, are, uh, um, the Pharisees, my apologies, are now coming to challenge him. One of them, a lawyer, asked trying to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? It's interesting um, as we look here, because we've been dealing with this in, in portion, looking at the, the glory, majesty, and grace of God in our morning sermons. But Jesus said to him, he asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 
Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus emphasizes not only the loving of God, but the loving of brothers, love, um, brotherly love, love amongst the brethren. And, and, and its importance is further stressed at the backdrop of what we read there in chapter 5 last week. Um, when you think about what was, uh, or two weeks ago now, but back in chapter 5, we look back in Galatians chapter 5 again at that verse um, where he is 13, where he says to, through love serve one another. But look at verse 14, for all the love is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. My friends, we have to be so careful, um, even as a church. Um, again, you know, the, the links between everything. We saw this uh, again in our studies on Wednesday. Self-centeredness, my friends, is destructive. Self-centeredness is self-defeating. It will lead to... Uh, uh, one person being consumed with themselves and their, and their worth. Uh, again, even again at 20, verse 26 of chapter 5, we see this, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So as we come out of 5 and into 6, is that this battle continues to, to, to drive us ever forward. And chapter 6 now shows us the practical aspects of this now being worked out. Paul has explained how we should be and now the practical aspects of it being worked out, how it's shown in Christian relationship. Paul, I would like to see, says uh, two ways in which... Um, we can see this. The first he speaks briefly about, and so we shall, and the second much more compre comprehensively. Um, the first is in verse 6, is concerning our relationship to the pastor, or to the elder, um, and the people of the, the church. Verse 6 says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches that him who is taught the word sharing all good things with him who teaches and what paul is saying here is the church is to care for those who have dedicated their lives to the ministry of the work of the gospel sharing all good things it means having fellowship with it is that link to uh, 1 timothy uh, chapter 5 verse 17 let the elders who rule be um, counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. And it can often, you know, be a difficult thing for pastors to, to speak of, maybe even to preach of, because of the subject. But it is here in Scripture, my friends, and therefore should not be avoided because of sensitivities. It should all be, always be spoken of in truth, seeking the truth. And I believe all Paul is doing here is reminding the Christians about the need to care for those who have dedicated their lives to serving them in the ministry of God's word. And, and no doubt, um, uh, the true ministers had come under a, a, a terrible time because we had this problem with the Galatians and the false ministry that had come. Those who came in secretly to try and uh, uh, pervert, uh, corrupt, uh, disrupt the gospel. But now having written and dealt with those things earlier in his letter, Paul now in chapter 5 and now where we are in chapter 6 reaffirms what it means to be a Christian 
And if we are to live by the Spirit, if we are to be led by the Spirit, if we are to do those things that the Spirit desires, then we as God's people must care for those who have dedicated themselves uh, and dedicated their lives to the ministry and preaching of God's Word. And there's a fellowship within that service, a partnership within that service. I, I wonder if it's something we often consider or think about because it's just something we do anyway. Uh, we as a church, and, and I can speak personally here at Hope, uh, I believe this is what we do anyway. It's not mutually said, but I believe uh, as God's people here haven't experienced it over these years, it's one that is mutually understood. But we should never be embarrassed to say that we all live striving to do what the Spirit desires. The pastor congregation relationship is always to be one of love, to be one of caring, to be one of sharing. Uh, and I pray that that remains here at Hope, no matter who um, is standing in the pulpit. And I'm sure that many of you will acknowledge that. And if you're listening, you belong to another church. This is how it should be. So that's one way in which the practical outpouring of the spiritual uh, leading uh, of a Christian should, should, it, should be expressed. This relationship between the pastor or relationship between the elder and the people of God. And the second way, my friends, is to be found in verse 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What's Paul saying here? He's saying, get close to one another. Draw alongside one another. Help one another. Or draw alongside so that we can get help. Uh, we can get help to carry these burdens that we have to bear. And we know, my friends, that sometimes these burdens can be very hard indeed. In essence, it, it, we, we can be such private people and we think it's just between us and the Lord. Well, there's a great deal of truth in that. But also, my friends, God clearly says here in his word that we are to bear one another's burdens. Oh, we're not to hide our burdens from each other. Uh, it, the word there translated in the Greek, I think the word is baros, it's a, it indicates a, a real burden, an abundance of load. The burden is an abundance of load. It's that, in other words, which is heavier than normal. An unusually heavy burden. And, you know, you, you have to stop and think, which one of us here does not have burdens? My friends, we all have our burdens to bear, our lot, the life which God has given us. And while it is wonderful and glorious uh, life to be know that you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we still have those battles and those burdens that we have to bear from time to time. It's not a, a life continually of burdens, but they will come. It may be a physical Burden. It might be sickness, it may be an accident, it will just be weakness in the body over the years uh, the, and the years. The wear and tear of life. It might be emotional. There is so much being spoken of currently concerning the emotional condition of people, the, the mental condition of people. It might be material, a need for, again, in this time of COVID, how much has been spoken about in a need for food and, and those other necessities that people have at this time when many are unable to work. It may be that we as Christians are suffering any one of those things. We're not immune to those things. We don't have some sort of personal force field around our body that keeps us from them. No, no, we have our burdens in many different ways. But whatever it may be, my friends, God says he does not want us to carry those burdens alone. 
In fact, if we, we're reading here um, what it says there in, in verse 2, um, if we're reading what, whatever, uh, what God says here, that we, we are to bear one another, but and so fulfill the law of Christ. We are doing his work. We're doing, the, we're doing that which Christ enables us to do. We're, 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 we're to experience those things together as a church. We're those tied together by the, bound, the binds of Christian love in Jesus Christ. He is that bond that links us all together. The bond amongst Christians, dare I say, my friends, um, though not always uh, experienced uh, in an outward sense, God is telling us it's stronger than uh, the bonds within a family. Uh, because the bonds within a family, you could have um, a brother uh, uh, and a sister, one a child of God and one's not. And the scripture clearly tells us two are walking together in the field. They may be walking anywhere, but at the time when Christ comes, one will be taken, the other left. Well, that will never happen to a Christian, you see, because all who are Christians will be taken. All are bound together by this tie of Christ. Bound together in Christian love. Belonging to the same family, this eternal family. And part of the reason we're to experience these burdens is that we as a church can share in these burdens. God allows our burdens, my friends. He allows them to help us, to learn, to teach us different things in our lives. We have burdens to teach us humility uh, and not self-sufficiency, uh, that we can't do it alone. We have burdens for, to teach us humility and not pride, uh, that we are to depend wholly upon God. And the lesson here is clear, to lean on one another to strengthen the ties that binds our hearts in Christian love. Blessed be the ties that binds our hearts in Christian love, we sing. It's a beautiful thing, absolutely glorious thing, to strengthen those ties. I mean, how much more stronger do we become when we truly can lean on each other? The commitment we have to one another. And you know, you just, you wonder how often do we neglect this part of God's word, my friends. Think about our lives. Think about our living as a church. It's very difficult right now. I appreciate because the whole church cannot gather together because of these COVID restrictions. But we are meeting and we are getting the opportunity to see each other and I, I do plead with you to try and make use of that as often as you can. There's a need to be able to, to lean upon each other. How often do we just hold on to our burdens, my friends? How often do we say, oh, I can handle this on my own. It's my business. Why should I tell anybody else? It's personal. It's just me and God, me and the Lord. Doesn't it say in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your burdens upon him for he cares for you? Yes, my friends, it does. And you would be right to say that's what the word says. And that's the thing we are to do first and foremost. God is not saying when we have our burdens that we're to run and find another Christian. No, no. God is saying quite clearly in 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast, when we have those, we cast our burdens upon him because he cares for us. But God also knows, and God has stated in his word, that we're also to share one another's burdens. We can't have one in the, in the neglect of the other. God also shows us that through his word, he desires by the holy working of the Holy Spirit uh, that we share our burdens as a people who care for one Another, share our burdens as those redeemed by the wonderful saving grace of God in Jesus Christ. We can't take the Bible in piecemeal, my friends. There is no part of this word if you're a true lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've truly repented and come to faith in Jesus Christ. I tell you, this, this hour, there's no part of this word which doesn't apply. We can't take what is 
we, we like and leave what we don't like. That's not the actions of one who desires to grow closer and closer to the Lord. The Bible explains this so many times. Uh, and you think of those who've experienced burdens. You think of um, David. What about David when he was being um, uh, uh, chased by Saul? Um, and he, he hides there in um, the wilderness of Ziph in 1 Samuel. Uh, in 1 Samuel 23. Uh, uh, and, you know, he, he, he's struggling. But in verse 17, we read this. And this is Jonathan. If you remember, verse 17, uh, well, 16. Um, Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. Jonathan, Saul's son, got up and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. Jonathan helped David to bear the burdens, strengthening him in God. And listen to the words he said to him there in 1 Samuel 23, verse 17. Uh, Jonathan says to David, Do not fear, for the hand of, my, of Saul my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Even my father Saul knows that. And if you read on, they make a covenant together and they carry on. He strengthened. He strengthened him um, uh, by um, telling him and, and confirming to him that which God had already said was to be. Or you think of Paul. Um, think of Paul in, in, uh, in the book of uh, Colossians. Action. Colossians chapter 4, uh, there at verse 7. He speaks there of Tychius, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, uh, will tell you all the news about me. Uh, or Omnisius, a faithful and beloved brother. Or Artistarchus, my fellow prisoner. Or Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. These are all those who, who stood by him and helped him uh, to be able to, as it were, shoulder our burdens, uh, be faithful to each other, faithful to the word, faithful to each other. Those are the characteristics that the Holy Spirit desires should be true of all of us. This is the objective, my friends. This is of the desire of the Spirit working in us. So, so we may love one another, to, to stand shoulder to shoulder, to put an arm around, as it were, to help bear that load. We at Hope, if you are listening from other churches, you are to bear each other's burdens, carry the load. Because, says Paul, when we do so, we fulfill, that's the language that he uses here in verse 2, we fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? You shall love, verse, chapter 5, verse 14, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's the same that Jesus said in John 13, 34. A new commandment, he says, I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Bear up one another in love. Serve one another in love. Do good to one another in love. And so, my friends, we will fulfill the, the law of Christ. What Jesus is asking is no small task. To love one another as he has loved us. This is the desire of the Holy Spirit for you, I say this evening, and for me. And, and just in case, as a, a, a child of God, we might be frowning at this prospect, <laughs> uh, thinking about specific people maybe, uh, uh, and, and thinking, bear their burdens. Paul, look at verse 3. Paul immediately hits, if that is me or you, if we're thinking of someone, thinking, mm, can't bear that person's burdens, uh, their brother or sister in Christ. Look at verse 3. If anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let each one examine his own work. 
and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each shall bear his own load. Despite what we think or we want to do or what we may want to do, God intends for us to serve one another in love. A healthy church is not only those who, not only one that has burdens, but uh, a people who share in those burdens. A church without burdens is not a church. It's just a group of individuals that gather together on certain days of the week. A church are those, my friends, God clearly shows, who are a family. Family of God. And as a family, we bear each other's burdens. Be careful that we don't think we're something when we're nothing. To examine ourselves, examine our own work, test our actions. And then we will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So test our actions. So then we can have, as it were, pride in ourselves without comparing ourselves to someone else. For every person shall or will bear their own load. That's our backpack, as it were. We all have this backpack. The load that God allows us to have personally. And we've got an answer for that backpack. And Paul reminded us that we're responsible for our own load. It's not a case that we dump it on someone. No, no. We have to deal with our load. But God is saying to draw alongside and help each other with that load. We have to deal with our own load. I have mine. I'm sure you have yours. And we're to honestly and truthfully, says Paul, examine ourselves again, uh, 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 examine ourselves, justify, I think is the word really, to, uh, to, to justify it spiritually, scripturally. We don't compare ourselves or examine ourselves in relation to other people. Our standard of comparison to the burdens we bear is God's word alone. The world will continually try and find a way out of their burdens. They look for this, what they call utopia. Um, my friends, the utopia is here. The ultimate joy is here in the word of God, in the gospel, in Jesus Christ, in the work of the Holy Spirit. As we're born again into this new life, free from the world's shackles, one living for God's glory by his spirit, a new family. And our desire has completely changed. It's no longer for self, but to ask our brother, to ask our sister, how can I serve you? How can I help you? No selfish ambition. No spirit-sapping pride. Just a desire to live truthfully for Christ. Truthfully for the glory of God through the work done of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the leading and working of God the Holy Spirit. And Paul gives us an example of what we've been looking at right there in verse 1. Brethren, he says of chapter 6, verse 1, if a man is overtaken in trespass, any trespass, any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. That spirit of gentleness. Here is a way to do good to one another, to serve one another in love, to fulfill the law of Christ, and thereby please God the Holy Spirit. If a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. We don't ignore. We don't criticize. We don't turn away from. The scripture says we restore. We can never think that, oh, what's going on with this person, uh, uh, this brother, this sister, is none of my business. And sometimes we may allow our personal sensitivities, my friends, to override what we know to be right. We mustn't stand apart condemning. No, we to go and spread the news. Have you heard about so-and-so? No, no. We're to understanding where that person may be, 
in their spiritual walk with God, draw alongside them in a spirit, as God says here, of godly gentleness. We're not saying it's going to be easy to do so, because we know what our nature is like. But my friends, I say again, we have a true nature. We have a new nature, which is different to the old. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Is that true of me? Is that true of you? It's going to require effort. But is effort worth doing? It's going to require effort maybe just to draw alongside that person in the first place. But it's effort worth doing. Matthew Henry says of this, we should labor by faithful reproofs and pertinent and seasonable counsels to bring them to repentance. Uh, the original word is to, he says, is to set in joint. It's like someone being dislocated, like having a dislocation. Uh, and what we are endeavoring to do, says Matthew Henry, is to uh, slip that bone back in, to, to put that joint back in, to reset that bone, as it were. Uh, Martin Luther, the great theologian and preacher, says, run to them, reach out your hand to them and help them up again. Comfort them with words of encouragement. Embrace them with motherly arms. And while we know that COVID is stopping a lot of that, there's much we can still do right now. We can only do this, though, my friends, with the leading of God, the Holy Spirit, with those fruits that we saw in chapter 5, those fruits of spirit of gentleness, a spirit of love, a humble heart. If we love one another in this way, if we serve one another in this way, my friends, if we allow those fruits of the Lord Jesus Christ to grow within us, we can, can indeed do as the Spirit desires, to carry one another's burdens. Because it's for our spiritual good and for the spiritual good of that person. Spiritual maturity, spiritual strong church, a shining Christ light church, a pouring out of the Spirit of God's church. If we're not like this, I dare say it is time for us to be like this, time for us to be this spirit-led church, blessed church, ready as it were to, to have that, 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 that fruit um, that has been planted to be cultivated and grown within us, church, a strong united church. A full of the Spirit of God church, a loving one another church, serving one another church, a doing good to one another church. That's how we should be. I do really pray that God will help us to develop in us that spiritual desire, that love that we should have for one another, that Spirit-led characteristic, so that we can proclaim better and better and better Jesus Christ and live a life which truly is to the glory of the Lord our God which is a blessing to those around us. May God help us in all that we continue to strive to do only by his strength and by his grace. Oh Lord God, we do thank you once again for your blessing, your mercy, and your grace. May you help us, oh Lord, help us in, in all that you do to live lives which are a blessing to you. Live lives in which we do these things you ask us within Holy Scripture, that we are led by the Spirit. We do, oh God, find ourselves lifted up in, in strength and in faith before our holy God and that we will bear one another's burdens. None of us will be left alone, feeling alone, uh, feeling separated or dislocated um, from you or from each other. Oh Lord, help us to love one another as Christ loved us. We ask and plead as we go forward into another week, oh God, that you will strengthen our hearts, 
and that be that which lifts us up like eagle's wings so when we're faint and we're weary we know we can always depend on you we ask and plead this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen <laughs>